Hey guys, it's Sheep and welcome back to my channel. Here we talk a lot of nonsense. On today's nonsense, we're gonna be talking about the relationship between Shane Dawson's cancellation and fat phobia. So all of the, you know, fat phobia, trigger warnings, social justice, all, all the warnings for that. Make sure to big like, go down there, subscribe, and let's get on to the video. So guys, I'm not really gonna be giving like a background or timeline of events. I just want to kind of focus on this unique perspective that I think I've found. I haven't really heard before, I just want to really share that. And that unique perspective is there's a relationship between fat phobia and Shane Dawson's cancellation. What I mean by that is that Shane Dawson is someone who's always struggled with his weight. In his like teens, he was overweight slash obese. But then when he got into his 20s, he started working out, making his diet more strict, and he lost all that weight. And that skinny Shane, we'll call him, is the Shane Dawson that first joined YouTube, the Shane Dawson that we first met. And Shane maintained this skinny slash fit appearance until I think just recently, I think it was like 2017, 2018. And Shane Dawson has gained back a little bit of weight and we're just gonna call that version of Shane Dawson overweight Shane. Um, so we have skinny Shane and overweight Shane. Um, I'm not trying to offend you Shane Dawson, I'm not trying to offend anybody at all. It's just, you know, in the context of this conversation. And it, it's just easier to kind of differentiate the two. So back to like the fat phobia thing. Skinny Shane is the one who made all of those awful videos, which I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. Those videos were awful, they were, they were just inappropriate. I don't know what else to say, like they are what they are. And Shane Dawson did get called out for them. Like there were like controversies surrounding those videos in the past while Shane was still like the skinny version of himself. But for each of those controversies, like Shane Dawson somehow managed to like come back after that. People like forgave him or just forgot, like I, I don't know what happened. But this most recent cancellation, which happened to overweight Shane, who hasn't really been making problematic videos at all, like definitely not what skinny Shane was doing in his earlier on days. People are saying that like, oh, he's giving like problematic white people the spotlight and like, kind of like subjective, you know, really. But yeah, so this overweight Shane Dawson who was not really making offensive videos like at all, he was actually making kind of like helpful videos in a sense, which now people think that he was being manipulative, which I, I will t I'll talk about this whole flip-flop that everybody's doing in a second. Okay, so I totally forgot to touch on that, but basically what I meant is that like, there was a time like just recently y'all were like so for Shane and now you guys are so, so, so against Shane. It's like everything that you previously thought was funny. It's like, I don't even know how I thought this was funny. Oh my God, his book is terrible. His movie is terrible, which, you know, some things are bad, but y'all are like going like polar opposites now. And it, it, it like, come on, come on now. Um, but this overweight Shane is the one that got canceled. Hopefully you guys are kind of seeing what I'm seeing in my head right now. Um, and that's that like skinny Shane, even though he was making terrible videos and he did get called out several times, everybody saw him and was like, oh, he's skinny, cute, and innocent. We can't cancel him. Versus overweight Shane, who wasn't really making problematic videos. If anything, they were kind of helpful in a way. Um, people saw him and they were like, this guy is overweight, he's hairy, he's not traditionally attractive because he's not skinny. Um, this guy matches my psychology term, mental schema of what a predator, um, racist slash bad person looks like. This guy is definitely a bad person. So you guys see what I'm saying right now? Now I'm not saying that like, because society is being fat phobic to Shane Dawson that cancels all of like those terrible, disgusting things he did. We want an explanation from him, like a real explanation. We want to hold him accountable. We want him to show us that he's taking actions to like improve himself and improve this mindset and like fix the damage he's done, like the bad influence he's been on society. But I guess what I want to bring to light is the reality of cancel culture in that like, Cancel culture is not about people being hashtag social justice warriors and being objective and canceling people based on the facts. And the facts are that he's a racist, she's a racist, and blah, 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 blah. The reality is that cancel culture is really subjective. A lot of the social media influencers and celebrities today have done terrible things, are currently doing terrible things. So I guess the moral of this video is that cancel culture is really subjective based on everybody's, you know, personal agendas and whatever is going on in people's minds. And we should be more aware of that fact and try to be more objective when holding people accountable 
accountable, not canceling, holding people accountable. So while it's good that as a society, we're like constantly learning and like reflecting on our past and like, you know, calling out like moments in our past or people's past where they've done problematic things and kind of holding them accountable. We need to do a better job of, you know, holding people accountable in the present. And I'm just gonna be honest, I'm talking about, you know, James Charles, his whole situation, Vlog Squad, the whole situation, TikTok influencers, their whole situation. These people are demonstrating problematic behaviors right now. It's 2020, 2021. A lot of these like social justice movements, we're more aware of them. They're more widespread online as well. Everybody is, you know, has a little bit more education than they did like, you know, 10, 20 years ago. And these TikTokers and all these influencers are still exhibiting problematic behavior. But a lot of their fans and a lot of people are kind of just like not paying attention or just like looking the other way because these people are like, I guess, young and attractive and like they're benefiting from like pretty privilege and white privilege and like, all that we need to hold them accountable in the presence not 10 years later when they're like fat and bald and ugly and like they have like i don't know arthritis from TikToking or typing or all that you know we need to hold people accountable in the present and that is honestly the best way to you know hold people accountable because after 10 years passes everybody's gonna be just like shane dawson that like oh i did that 10 years ago i i haven't done that recently and it just like complicates the situation so why not just like you know get the problem at its root and yeah, that is just my little unique angle, my thoughts and opinions. Hopefully that was all clear and concise to y'all. Um, hopefully you guys took away something of value from this video. This video got kind of deep. <laughs> Me making a deep... <laughs> Anyways, go down there to the comment section and let me know what are your thoughts on this conversation, on this topic. And yeah, make sure to a big like. Go down there and subscribe, and I'll be back with another video. Until then, bye!